Okay, this is part 13 of how to set up your own Raspberry Pi for greenhouse monitoring, temperature controls, etc., etc., etc. I had a request, uh, I, don't know, I guess it's probably within the last two weeks, uh, asking how to insert data into the uh, database with Python. So I'm going to go over that today. Uh, so if you just bear with me a sec. Uh, so, if you uh, bring up the script, uh, or you bring up your, well, I guess if you don't have a Python, you'll have to make one. Uh, but I'm going to go into just how to insert data from uh, from Python into the database today. Um, at some point when I have a website I can share more of the code and script with uh, on, I will. Um, for now, we're just going to go into it. So. Uh, uh, I use Emacs as my editor, so I'm doing Emacs root owdemo.py. All right, um, and so uh, you probably will need to import PyCurl. So, uh, and if you don't have that installed, uh, you should have uh, if you followed my. Uh, previous how to install res how to how to set up the Raspberry Pi videos. Uh, we have parts one through twelve. Uh, this is part thirteen. So uh, import Pi curl <coughs> is the first part. Um, you'll definitely need that for this. And then you'll need to import MySQL DB, like you see here. And then you'll need to connect to your database using uh, the script that you see on the scene uh, screen, basically. So C O N N or connection equals MySQL DB dot connect bracket host equals uh, parentheses localhost parentheses comma uh, CR or carriage return or enter to go to the next line and then uh, obviously you have to line that up in Python uh, usually if you hit tab it'll align it where it should be uh, so it'll be uh, you'll, uh, if you use host you'll say local host unless you have a specific host that's remote through an IP address in which case you'd use the IP address of that host then uh, you do user equals and you give your username uh, also in the uh, the double quotes as you see here I guess I'll highlight some of this as I go and then uh, password uh, obviously this is a demo version of my script uh, I'm not going to give out my uh, my SQL password and then uh, you'll have to point to the database that you want to use in my case it's uh, the database is called solar so uh, DB equals solar and then uh, you close this back out with X equals connect uh, C O N N dot cursor and uh, open bracket close bracket all right so that'll connect to the database that basically pairs this Python script to the database and logs in logs you into it so you can access it then uh, let's see I have a lot of stuff in this script, so uh, you could ignore most of that for now. Um, pardon me, just a sec. I'm kind of just doing this on the fly. I hope you'll bear with me for a moment. I might, uh, maybe I'll edit out some of my random babbling. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so, um, well, I guess first of all, I should talk about uh, some of the variables. Uh, so you'll have to you'll have to collect the data from the sensors I think I went over that in a previous video uh, we'll just use outside temp for an example so you can understand how this translates so uh, you set your variable here outside temp equals read temperature bracket parentheses the address of the sensor that you want to read close parentheses close bracket so now after you've done that Basically, the Python script will have grabbed the temperature value from the sensor that you've pointed to. This here is the sensor address for the bracket that I'm pointing to. All right. And then once you've done that, now you have a value uh, that you've captured, basically. And so if you want to do other calculations or whatever and change that value into some other value you can do that before you go to insert into the script but once that's done 
you come down here and uh, this is this is the line this is it uh, so you go try colon and then you drop down a line and uh, match your indentation let's see I'll uh, so I'm counting eight over to the X um, again uh, if you hit tab usually Python will correct it anyway so it's try colon space drop down to a new line do your indent like you're like you do in normal Python code and then it's X dot execute open bracket double quote insert into temps in my case temps uh, so uh, in your database whatever your table name is that's what you'll put there in this case my database is solar the table I'm inserting data into is temps and then uh, you'll want to point to all your values here uh, for example uh, the first value that I'm plugging in here is greenhouse ID that's basically the incremental ID uh, for each line in the database uh, that makes it so that when you go into the database later each line has its own distinct value and so uh, no matter how you manipulate the data in the database each uh, each row in the database is a unique row and those numbers don't get reused uh, I hope that I hope I've made that clear enough uh, and so, for example, I'm inserting uh, outside temperature, average greenhouse temperature, CPU, disk space, RAM used, RAM free, CPU use, CPU use, humidity temperature, humidity inside, and the date time. <clears throat> so what we're doing here is we're correlating between uh, the database values and the values that are in the Python script. So we do insert into temps, you open another bracket, and and then you you, uh, you you go into you're using your database variable names in here so uh, let me actually pull up my SQL query browser quick <coughs> so you can understand what I mean <coughs> excuse me Just move this into uh, into a spot where you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Uh, okay, so uh, just so you have a, an understanding of what I mean, the variables in the database, like ID, that's uh, yeah, I messed that up. Greenhouse ID is different. Anyway, uh, you'll notice each each row has a unique ID uh, that's incremented automatically I believe we set that up in the database video that I did previous um, greenhouse ID the date time modified but what I really want to point to is stuff like east high east low west high west low and I'll scroll across here so you can see outside and average greenhouse or a AVG GH I just wanted to point out where this corresponds because the first part of this script you're telling it to point to the database variables and then the second part of this statement is where you're grabbing the variables from within the Python script so go ahead and put your variables in um, when you're first doing this I recommend you start with just one variable uh, and work your way up because it's really easy to get confused in the process of doing this um, because you have to correspond first you set your values here um, so uh, open bracket all your values they, they're separated by a comma no spaces between them <coughs> and then you close that bracket and then uh, a space, a values, a space, open a bracket, and then uh, and then you start setting your actual value values for the variables. Um, so, for example, uh, greenhouse ID. I'll take us back across to here. Greenhouse ID is one. So you'll notice 
that we set that variable in this line here as a one. Um, and then for everything, for all these other values that where you're inserting data from the Python script to the database, you're going to use percent %s. So one comma percent %s comma percent %s comma percent %s. All right. And so you have to match the exact number of percent %s's to the exact number of uh, variables that you're corresponding both from the Python script and the database. So basically what you're doing is you're pointing to the database, then you're telling it grab these values and it grabs the values. Uh, then after you do that, you close the double quotes, uh, go to a comma, you open another bracket, and then you, you point to the variables that are from the actual Python script here. So what I'll do is run us back up here and I'll show you I'll show you where uh, what I mean by that. Notice outside temp here is all in lower case. So if you look here, the ones that are in the Python script, like outside temp, that's lower case. And if you look, that corresponds to the second one up here, which is outside. Uh, and if we look back at the database, you see the outside, if I can scroll back across to it, you see the outside is all uppercase here. So just note the difference there. Um, and so you, you're pointing to the database values first, or the database variables first, then you're giving the value, you're passing those values across, and then you're pointing back to the Python script and saying where you're pulling those values from, which variables those come from. Um, so then once you do that, um, obviously these are also separated by commas, no spaces. Uh, and then uh, in this case, my last variable value here is a time variable. Um, and this one gives a date and a time and, in, and seconds as well. So it's putting a very precise time in. And so I'll just show you that on the time here. Yeah, see if you look at date time, you can see that that variable uh, or that value is very precise. It's giving the date, the time uh, in hours, minutes, and seconds. Okay, so uh, and, and if you wanted to do that, and I, you probably do, well, depending on how you're setting your database up, how precise you want your data, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, uh, the way to do that is time.strftime, and then an open bracket, single quote, percent, capital Y, dash, percent, lowercase m, dash, percent, lowercase d, a space, percent, uppercase H, colon, percent, uppercase M, colon, percent, uppercase S, close the single quote, and then the other three close brackets here, we're closing all of the brackets that we opened here. Like, so we opened a bracket here, we opened one over here, and then finally we opened one for the time value here. Okay, so you close all those brackets, you come down, you do the same uh, indentation as you did for the x.execute, dot execute, execute, and then you're, you're committing that information to the database from the Python script with connection commit, or c-o-n-n dot c-o-m-m-i-t, uh, open bracket, close bracket. And then uh, in the case of an error, you want to roll back that connection. So that's why we do accept afterward. So we're using, we're using a, a, a statement, uh, try accept. So we're trying to insert this data into the database. If that fails, we're going to drop this exception in place and do a connection rollback. So you would do a, uh, accept. Again, that's uh, all the way over to the left. And then obviously do connection rollback. And uh, I put in this little uh, print value here so that when it does successfully import data to the database, it, it says uh, end of database insertion. But there's another way to see that the, database, that the data has been inserted to the database. So what I'll do now is we'll exit out of this. And I'll, uh, this was a demo script. Obviously, the password isn't shared here. So what I'll do is, uh, I think it's root OW temp is the actual, uh, is the actual uh, program I'm using. 
It's basically the same thing. I just removed the password because I'm not sharing my database password on the internet. Uh, so what I'll do is give you a demonstration. If you go to execute this script, uh, you just do uh, forward slash root forward slash owtemp.py or whatever your script name is. And uh, I gotta figure out which what it actually is. It might be ow underscore temp. Yeah, it's ow underscore temp. So here. Um, and let's see. Oh, that must be an old script then, because uh, here's a here's this is a good example of what happens when something isn't working correctly. So I guess we'll just go over that briefly um, so you understand it. So you see, I tried to run the script, um, and it gave me a traceback most recent call last, and it points to line 190, and it says west low temp equals read temperature, and it gives the address. Basically, it couldn't find the address of that uh, temperature probe, and so it was unable to grab any value for that, and therefore it couldn't pass any, any data forward because there was no data to pass effectively. So let me figure out what my... Um, figure out what my active uh, um, OW new. Oh, I think it's OW new. Sorry, it's been a while since I did any of this, but I didn't, I didn't want this video to go on for, uh, you know, to be left behind for forever. There we go. So OW new is the active script. <clears throat> and what I did, I went through and made it so these values all print out into the screen, but you don't need to do that. The way that you know you have success inserting data into the database, and this sounds counterintuitive, but the way that you know that you have success inserting the database into the database is when you see these message, this message here, uh, warning, data truncated for column average greenhouse at row one. And the reason for that is that I haven't done any averaging or uh, or uh, truncating the data down. So when the sensor, when the Python script goes out and grabs data from the sensor, it's carrying multiple decimal decimal values. I think it's like six decimal places or something like that. And so because there's extra extra decimal places on there, and the uh, database is only set up to take it out to two decimal places, that's why you get that warning data truncated error coming back. But that indicates indicates that you got that data into the database. If you don't see that, you, you got something wrong in the script that we were looking at before. And uh, so you have to go back and look at syntax. Um, I think I'm going to cut this video off right here. Uh, I just mostly wanted to respond to the question about it and push this series on how to set this stuff up uh, forward a little bit more. Uh, I am getting ready to switch over to Arduino uh, for the controls, and then we'll still be keeping the Raspberry Pi for all the database management and web page server stuff. Um, if my life doesn't fall completely apart this year, I'm going to try and move that forward and uh, and put everything through uh, web pages and uh, rather than using the SQL dashboards, and we'll really get things set up nice. Um, I hope you found this interesting or informative. If you have any questions, uh, don't be afraid to ask them in the comments section. Uh, if you have anything to add to this, of course, don't be afraid to, to put that in the comments section as well. I uh, hope you'll like and subscribe to the channel, and I uh, hope you'll stick with us and move forward in 2020. Thanks for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network, and we'll see you on the next video.